Welcome to the Fight, Self-Defense, and Martial Arts Book Review, the most comprehensive, the most interesting, and the most useful book review of its kind in the world. From traditional styles to military close combat books, knife fighting and pressure point books, reference books to biographies, we cover them all. Be you brawler or Buddhist or something in between, you'll always leave here with something for your mind and something for your fists. Now let's look at the next contender. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to my next self-defense martial arts and fighting book review. So today's book is a wonderful, wonderful publication. It really strips away any romanticism, tradition, glamour, sophistication related to the martial arts that sometimes you expect in a martial arts book. And it replaces it with, and I'll use the author's words, it replaces it with a book that at once is a tribute, a how-to guide, and a non-apologia for one of the world's most vital activities, the fight. The title of the book is Fight. Author, Eugene S. Robinson, published in 2017 by HarperCollins. As you can see, it's a coffee table format, hardcover, well-constructed, very well laid out. Uh, that's Eugene right there. Eugene's an award-winning journalist. He's a lifelong uh, martial artist, uh, Kempo, Jiu-Jitsu, uh, a lot of other styles. He's also a talented musician, and he's a front man for a band called Oxbow. Uh, so you can check them out on theoxbow.com. I was fortunate and privileged to talk to Eugene before doing this book review. Wonderful individual, as well-spoken as he is well-read. And we just had a great conversation, and I'll try to share some of his insights as we move through this review. So as you said, it's a coffee table book, and I am going to right away give this the award for Pound for Pound, the coffee table book with the highest level of testosterone of any coffee table book in the world, bar none. And I will go, I will go to the mat on that one. So let's walk, let's walk through it. Again, you can see the cover beautifully, beautifully illustrated. You go straight to the dedication. His dedication is for all of my enemies, every single one of them. Without you, none of this would have ever been possible. And, you know, that kind of says it all. There's a lot of serious things in this book, but he keeps it light. He keeps it funny. He keeps it serious. It's just uh, great. It's a great book. Here's uh, Eugene with Take Tank Abbott. This is an interview and um, discussion about Tank Abbott and his perspectives on fight and the fight game. Eugene does interviews with Evander Holyfield. There's interviews with jail inmates. So he really gets into depth and, and doesn't try to stay on any particular course. It really covers, just like the, the title says, the fight. I really like how they've, he's, there's, they've sectioned off uh, lists and, and particular topics. This one's on movie fights, once again, to show his, his humor fights in fight movies where both the fight and the fight movie suck. Uh, he's got a couple lists. I don't agree with all of them. This uh, this this particular list I uh, I do tend to agree with, but uh, but nevertheless, that's what books are about. Beautiful illustration, beautiful illustrations. A lot of grappling illustrations. I mentioned that to him. Uh, he said that wasn't necessarily by design. Just uh, happened happened to come out that way. Uh, here's another <clears throat> another list. Again, section section off. Um, as I mentioned, I don't agree with all of this. This list right here is worth the price of the book. The 10 best boxing matches in history. It's just really well thought out. I agree with it. Buy it. <laughs> See if you agree with it. But um, but it's uh, likely that you will disagree with any any part of it. Again, another beautiful illustration is this stand up. You know, here's what it looks like a uh, couple milliseconds after getting clunked by a overhand right. And then, as I've said, he covers a lot of different aspects of the fight. And this kind of surprised me as I'm getting toward the end. There's a whole section on sports and fighting. Here's the soccer hooligan. Those of you from the UK or know the UK, soccer hooligans are just thugs. 
that go to sports matches and cause trouble, usually ending up in quite violent violent fighting. Another great list, The Dirty Dozen. This covers uh, the best sports brawls in history. And then, of course, you can't talk about sports and fighting without talking about hockey. So a whole section on, on hockey. I'm not a big, big hockey guy, but if you are, this has got to be um, uh, money for you. Uh, there's uh, Dave Tiger Williams apparently spent 3,966 minutes in the uh, penalty box, largely because he was fighting all the time. Apparently that's the equivalent of seven full games. So he really, he really covers uh, the gambit and takes the discussion of fighting to a level that I've never seen in any book. And we may frankly never, see, never see again. So let's uh, let's talk about the quotables and the notables. Let's do the quotables first. My quotables are in pink. <laughs> All right. So the first quotable right here is in this in this section. And really, I'm just going to read the, the quotable is this first sentence right here. Swinging, missing, slowing. And then the harsh reality. The average person cannot even swing their arms vigorously for 60 seconds let alone hit another human being without doing what we in the biz like to call gassing. So I really like this quote uh, because of what you can pull out of it. And what you pull out of it is this non-empirical statistic that I fully agree with, uh, that most people out there, fighters or uh, not, or susceptible to fighting or not, are in no kind of condition. And so the takeaway from that is that if you are a martial artist and you put your heart into it and you train like you should, then you should have some kind of conditioning, which gives you a natural edge over those thugs that don't. You won't gas, they will gas, and you have this natural edge. It also should be a reminder to you, and if it's not, I'm reminding you now that every time you get on the mat, every time you walk into that dojo you go in and you give it everything if you train hard you're hard to beat don't gas and you have an edge the next quotable is in this wonderful section once again a little bit of humor the punchline and how to get it get it the punchline that's called a, a pun uh where he's actually talking about different kinds of punches and uh, so there's this, uh, he, he winds it, wraps it up uh, second to last with a haymaker, which is what I call, what I tell, call my, tell my students called the chump punch. And he tends to agree with it. So the quotable is, if by some chance you are knocked out by one being a haymaker, just leave town forever. Since that's how long it'll take for nearly everyone to forget that you got taken out by a punch made popular by Captain Kirk. Really, maybe I like this quote because it resonates with me, and it's a reminder that once again, those that aren't trained and think they know how to fight, don't. And those of us that do train, whether we're true brawlers and competitive, or like the vast majority are not that, but you still need to know that if they, the vast majority of people out there are going to do a haymaker, it's a ridiculous punch. It's easy to defend. And once again, it gives you this little edge. I just really like uh, how succinctly he said what I was thinking. All right. So the Marshall takeaway, two of those. So this is a nice section on grappling. Little, little uh, introductory how-to guide. <clears throat> Again, not intended to be a full how-to guide, but it's an orientation. And in particular, there's this orientation to the sleeper hold. Every martial artist, be you grappler, stand-up, whatever your discipline, you need to know how to do a sleeper hold. <laughs> yeah, those of you who have heard my reviews or will hear my reviews, <clears throat> you'll hear me come down uh, kind of hard on... Um, martial arts book authors uh, because they're martial artists and they're not authors and frankly most of them are pretty hard to read you know there you can get the gist of it and there's 
good takeaways that you'll get out of my book reviews, but the writing itself is very challenging to read sometimes. Not the case with this book. It is exactly the opposite. Eugene, again, he's a journalist by trade anyways, but there's good journalists and bad journalists. He's incredibly well written. Great syntax, great grammar, great tone. You know, all the aspects of good writing is here in this book. So it's just really enjoyable to read. So back to the point is here's a really well written section on what a sleeper hold is, but then illustrated right here beautifully by this real world picture of it's almost perfectly the throat is aligned with the crook of the of the arm <clears throat> with the forearm and the bicep uh, compressing the carotid arteries on either side of it of course as you know restricting blood flow to the brain and to a lesser degree airflow which results in the individual passing out so the takeaway being get to know a sleeper hold and get to know it now if you don't already practice it practice it carefully practice it with the right supervision, but regardless of who you are and what you study, you need to know a sleep and hold. The last martial takeaway, and then as I start to move toward conclusion, is this section where he's talking to uh, jail inmates, uh, past, past and present. I don't think they're necessarily future inmates. And in that environment, of course, this, the fight is about survival and dominance. And so the technique is called a slap, grab, and twist. My apologies if you can't see this. Future, uh, future reviews, I'll start zooming in and zooming out. Uh, but believe me, right there, it says slap, grab, and twist. And I mentioned that to Eugene. I said, you know, that's, I love that. <laughs> and he says, oh, my gosh. I love it too, but it was, ho it was horrible. And I was thinking, you know, well, it's kind of bad, but I've seen more horrible techniques. Is no, 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 you don't understand what I'm saying. When we we're talking about it, he demonstrated it on me. He took me down hard, <clears throat> and so now then I then I understood. So this is a slap, <clears throat> not a tap. It is a a backhand slap or front hand slap. <clears throat> A grab and not a, a grab that's <laughs> gentle. It is a violent grab with a violent twist <laughs> to take the individual down. No mercy. It's not elegant. It's not intended to be elegant. It's not fair. It's not intended to be fair. And this is where sport martial arts and, and self-defense martial arts part ways. You can't do this. You can't do this in MMA, but you can do it and you need to have this in your arsenal. Very simple, very effective, very violent. And from the martial arts perspective where the key to martial arts self-defense is not losing, <clears throat> slap, grab, or gra uh, slap, grab, and twist is all about not losing. So as we conclude... <clears throat> I'd like to share an anecdote with you that uh, Eugene uh, shared with me, and that was that um, that a couple of days before it was due to be published, the publisher called him and said he needed two a couple more pages. So he uh, so he had something prepared and finished, cleaned it up on knife fighting, <clears throat> and they said great job. They put it in, published the book. So then when it was published in the UK, HarperCollins said, uh-oh, uh, we've got a problem, there's knife fighting in there, and we don't want the liability associated with that should somebody read your book and go out and do something ugly with a knife. So this book is banned in the UK. It's their loss. It's uh, highly unfortunate, but as a result, you know, it didn't do nearly, <laughs> nearly as well as as it could have had it been able to be pub, uh, sold in the, in the UK as well as the United States. Um, nevertheless, it is available here in the United States. Uh, I strongly encourage you to go out and get it because I am giving it my highest rating of five full fists. Again, very well written, very enjoyable, highest level of testosterone um, coffee table book in the world. 
I'm about used books with the best of them. But in this case, I strongly encourage you get on Amazon, Barnes and Noble. It's all there. Look it up. Buy a new version. Read through it. If you don't like words, there's a lot of pictures in there for you guys. If you like words and don't like pictures, there's a lot of that too. It's uh, the only caution I would tell you is that there is, I would consider it rated R for vulgarity and uh, graphic violence. So it's not necessarily uh, something for kids. But other than that, go out and get it. Enjoy it. And um, thank you, Eugene Robinson, for publishing this incredible book.